Half a day, students. I am Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. Welcome to PBS University. Our friends at PBS Guam and the Guam Department of Education put this episode together with some fun and exciting learning material to help you keep up with your studies. So thank you for joining us on another learning adventure. Sidzu Usmasi and have a great listen. PBS University is a program by PBS Guam and the Guam Department of Education in conjunction with public school teachers. These lessons are created to provide both parents and students with a unique educational experience while helping students to continue learning at home. PBS University, next on PBS Guam. One, two, three, four. Come along, let's sing a song. We'll have a great adventure. Today's the day. We'll have a great adventure. Numbers, letters, science things, all that we can do. Help you deal with how you feel. Share with us too. It's super cool and just like school. Yeah. Our awesome learning adventures. So grab a friend, the fun will end. Our awesome learning adventures. Awesome learning adventures with PBS University. Half a day. That's how we say hello in tomorrow. And for your fast fun fact, did you know that 70% of the Earth is covered in a certain element? Do you know what it is? Welcome to another episode of PBS University and Learning with Mrs. Castro. Thank you so much for being with me here today. And Ali, which is hello in Palawan. How are you today? And Ta'a Klem, which is what is your name in Palawan? Can we say that again? Ta'a Klem. My name is Mrs. Castro. What's your name? Nice to meet you. In today's episode, we are going to be focusing on a holiday. Let's see what this holiday has. What do you think? I'll give you three seconds. Three, what holiday surrounds itself with candy? Two, what holiday surrounds itself with orange and black? One, it is Halloween! And for a fun fact today, did you know that before when people would go trick-or-treating, they didn't get candy. They would get small toys, they would get cakes, and the reason why candy came into play was in the 1950s when businesses wanted to promote their candy. Isn't that interesting? So the next time you get some candy when you trick-or-treat, think about that fun fact. In today's episode, we are going to be learning about Halloween. We're also going to be learning about poetry. And we're going to be reading some parts of The Raven, which is a very famous poem by Edgar Allan Poe. And we'll be making some fun Halloween treats and doing something fun and Halloween-y. I'm looking forward to this learning adventure with you. Let's go. Let's talk about The Raven. The Raven is a very famous poem written by American writer Edgar Allan Poe. He wrote this poem in the 1800s. And this poem is a ballad, and a ballad is a poem that is usually focused around romance or sentimental things. And it is composed of 18 stanzas. What's a stanza? A stanza is a group of lines put together in a poem, and it's usually offset by an indentation or a space. And you can see the raven here. We can see the 18 stanzas, and we can see how they're separated 
So let's talk about and dive into the Raven and talk about some of the specific lines. We'll also be talking about more figurative language. Remember, figurative language brings a body of work to life. And this poem, The Raven, has a lot of figurative language. We'll be talking about personification and illusion today. So let's look at the raven. Personification is when you give something that's not human, human characteristics. Here's an example. This I whispered and an echo murmured back the word Lenore. Merely this and nothing more. Edgar Allan Poe is saying the echo was whispering. That's personification. Illusion is when an author calls something to mind without explicitly mentioning it. Here's an example in the raven. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the nice Plutonian shore, quoth the raven nevermore. Edgar Allan Poe is alluding to the Greek god of the underworld, Pluto. And that's an example of illusion in the raven. Now it's time for our Halloween treat. So for this treat, you'll need chocolate pudding, gummy worms, milk, Oreos, a pan, a whisk, and a plastic bag. You're gonna start by making your pudding Mix the entire bag of pudding with your milk and whisk, whisk, whisk away. Whisk until it starts to get thick and then once you're satisfied, you're gonna put it aside. Once you're done with your pudding, place about 20 to 25 cookies into a bag and seal it very carefully. Then, very carefully as well, smash them until they resemble dirt. So smash, smash, smash. You're gonna smash them until they're fine. Now it's time to assemble. You need your gummy worms, your pudding, and your smashed up cookies. You're going to take your pan and pour your pudding so it's even. Then you're going to carefully take your smashed up cookies and spread it over so it looks like our dirt. It's starting to come to life. And then the final piece is you're going to add your gummy worms. It's super yummy and super creepy. And if you have brothers or sisters, they may try to get your gummy worms. And now you can share this with your whole family. A fun Halloween treat. It's Halloween craft time. So for this craft, you're going to need an old envelope you're not using, a popsicle stick, a black marker, and a pencil. You're going to start by outlining a cute little ghost. Then you're going to carefully cut it out. Once it's all cut out, you're going to outline your ghost in black marker. And then you're going to add your eyes and your mouth. Then it's really going to come to life. So cute. Finally, you're going to take your ghost and you're going to glue it to the top half of your popsicle stick. Now you have a bookmark. Don't forget to test it out. Happy reading everyone and happy Halloween. Before we end, I wanted to play a quick game of Halloween Would You Rather. Would you rather be a ghost or a werewolf? I think I'd be a ghost. Would you rather fly in a broom or be a bat? I'd definitely be a bat. And would you rather read a spooky story or see a spooky movie? This one is hard, but I think I'd go with the story. All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for another great episode of Learning with Mrs. Castro. Today, we learned some more figurative language. We learned about personification and illusion and we made some fun crafts and a yummy Halloween treat. I hope you have a fun and safe Halloween. Remember, you are amazing, you matter, you are important, and practice makes progress. I hope to see you in the next episode. Take care, be safe, bye. Kumusta, friends? That's how you say hi in Tagalog. For your fast fun fact, did you know that Guam is right next to the deepest part of the ocean? It's called the Marianas Trench. It is seven miles deep, and if you measure from the very bottom of the Marianas Trench to the very top of Mount Lam Lam, Mount Lam Lam would be the tallest mountain on Earth.
Buenas and half a day. Hello, everyone. Kamusta na? That is, hi, how are you? In the Filipino language called Tagalog. Kamusta na? Ako ay si Mrs. Paulino. Welcome to PBS University Math Corner where everyone counts. Oh no, another power outage. Oh, let me see if I can find something here to use for light versus a flashlight. Okay, here we go. I've got my lighter here. All right, here we go. Another one here. Okay. Ooh, it's pretty dark in here. Uh, there you are. I hope you're all doing safe in this dark and stormy night. I think this is a good time to tell us some scary stories instead. Well, what is the scariest film that you've ever seen before? Wow, those sound pretty scary. Let's hear more from our middle schoolers' top horror films. The scariest film I've ever watched was The Conjuring. The Conjuring. Pug Pug, a Filipino horror movie. Mm. It's perfect blue. Annabelle. Mm. Half of her body was hanging on the wall. She was stuck inside that room with the nun, and then Annabelle literally went, <sighs> like, stole her soul. Or something. No one gets out alive. The ring. It was pretty scary. I couldn't sleep for like two nights. Scream is the scariest film I've seen. Scream! Those are pretty scary. Well, I remember when I was still very young watching a Filipino horror film. I think those are the worst and scariest. Well, it haunted me for days and even up to now, I still have the habit of fully covering myself up with a bed sheet up to my neck like this. Well, I do have a scary math joke just for you. I'm just too squared to say it. But seriously, do you know that there is such a thing as arithmophobia? Arithmophobia, also known as numerophobia, is an extreme fear of numbers which causes great anxiety and panic attacks. People may feel afraid of all numbers or only specific numbers, such as the infamous and unlucky number 13. And for some of us, we were born in that day. I was born on February 13th. Well, that is why also many buildings and elevators will not identify a 13th floor. When entering a math class, does it feel like you are entering a haunted house or being in a horror film? Welcome to my math class! <laughs> or feel like screaming like this. Today, we're going to learn how to convert mixed numbers into proper fractions. <laughs> Did you know that approximately 93% of adult Americans experience some level of math anxiety? Alarmingly, around 17% of Americans suffer from high levels of math anxiety according to a study in the Journal of Psychoeducational Assessment. Although most experience some anxiety when seeing or working with numbers and math problems, fortunately for us, there are ways to reduce our math anxiety. Here are 10 ways to reduce math anxiety by Ferris State University. Number one, know the math anxiety formula, which is confidence plus preparation is equal to success. Number two, you are not alone. Many people, including math teachers and tutors, have math anxiety when confronted with a new problem. Number three, ask questions. Some students are reluctant to ask questions in fear of looking foolish. Asking questions is a sign of strength and other students in the classroom will be glad that you asked because they might have the same questions too. Number four, there is more than one way to solve a problem. Do not give up. Work to understand the problem your way. Remember, there is often more than one way to solve a problem. Number five, overcome negative talk. One of the most important ways that you can do better is simply by having a positive attitude. 
That's right. Avoid negative self-talk saying things like, I can't do it, or I'm not good at this. Set high expectations and rise to the occasion and say, I will try it out, work it out, and find a solution. Number six, read your math text. A good practice is to read the section your teacher is planning to teach before going to class. Number seven, consider math as a foreign language. It must be practiced daily for success. Always do your classwork and homework. You are building on a base of skills and concepts. Find math everywhere around you at home, when you are shopping, and even around nature. Number eight, develop responsibilities for your success. If you miss a class, be sure to get the class notes from a fellow student. If you miss something early on, it becomes more difficult to catch up. Number nine, know the basics. Be sure to know your math from earlier grades. Math builds on itself. You may have to go back and relearn some materials, but remember, it's never too late. Number 10, use different resources. Find math videos on YouTube, play math games online, use flashcards, research online, create a study group, or use available tutoring on campus. And most of all, have fun. Now, are you ready to face that fear and do some math practice? Let's begin with Feed the Monster. Find the exponent or the equivalence of the scientific notation. What is the correct answer? Great job! Now, what is the missing number? You are right. Next, using these fractions, find the zombies in your coordinates. Did you find them? Well, here they are. Great job. Hey, the power is back on. Just in time for me to say, Sizuas Maasi, Maraming Salamat po. Let me blow out this candle. Thank you so much for staying with me in the dark and facing our fears together. I hope you had a great time also practicing and applying the properties of integer exponents and finding the rational numbers. Remember, in math, everyone counts and so do you. Stay positive, stay kind, and stay safe out there. See you next time. Adios! Hi for day everyone, this is Mr. Ernest Ochoco with another fast fun fact. And today I've got my friend, Maria Ann. Hello. And we're gonna talk about something really cool. The Statue, Statue of Liberty. Liberty. Did you know that the Statue of Liberty was a gift from a particular country to America? Do you know what country that was? Yes, I do. It was France. Yes, and the Statue of Liberty, Liberty was also made out of a particular metal. Copper. <laughs> Correct. And the reason why it turned green is because of oxidation. Oxidation is a chemical reaction where air reacts with a certain metal to change its color over time. And that's oxidation and your fast fun fact. Bye! Bye, -bye. and girls and hallo and wie geht's which is hello and how are you in german welcome to another episode of learning with mrs castro it's so nice that you're here with me at pbs university usually you see me in math videos and in language arts videos today i'm putting on my science cap and we're gonna do a science video we're gonna be doing a cool experiment with some candy that you usually get around this certain holiday let's see if you can guess the holiday i'll give you a joke first 
What is a goblin's favorite cheese? Think about it. Think about it. Three, two, one. It's mozzarella. <laughs> Just like mozzarella, but mozzarella. Get it? <laughs> All right. Did you guess the theme that we had today or our holiday theme? It also is centered around the colors orange and black. And the candy we're using in our experiment is gummy bears. Do you know what it is? I'll give you a brief clue and we'll find out later on in the video. All right, let's go and do an experiment with some fun gummy bears. Hi, boys and girls. It's experiment time. For this experiment, I actually have a special guest. Let's bring her in. What? Hello, what's your name? Unai? How old are you, Unai? Two! <laughs> this is my daughter, Unai, and she's going to be joining me for an experiment. All right. What are these, Unai? What are these called? Can you tell our friends? What are these called? Gummies. Gummies? Gummy what? Gummy you don't know? Gummy you don't know? Gummy bears. Can you say gummy bears? Gummy bears. Gummy bears. What color is this? Red. And what color is this? And what color is this? Purple. Purple. Okay, so we are going to be doing an experiment with gummy bears. We're doing this experiment because our episode is themed around Halloween. And some of us get gummy bears during Halloween. So we're going to be learning about osmosis. Can you say osmosis? Osmosis. Osmosis. Good job. So let's do our experiment on osmosis together. We are going to take our gummy bears and put them into three different solutions. And we're going to see how big they get after one day or 24 hours. So we're going to start with this liquid. What is this, Unai? Liquid. I know, but what kind of liquid? Is this... What kind? Milk. Milk. This is actually almond milk. So can you take this and drop it in? Ready, set, go. Boop. <laughs> so that's our first one. The next one, can you smell it? Does it smell like anything? Water. It's water. Okay, pick one you want to put in the water. Okay, drop it in. And the last one, smell this one, Unai. What does that smell like? Water. No, it's Vinegar. vinegar okay so take the last one and drop it in Woo! we are going to look where these gummy bears are in 24 hours to see how big they get let's do that together osmosis is when material especially water passes through a membrane that won't allow all molecules to pass here's our control gummy bear it measures at 3 eighths of an inch as you can see here Water was the one that passed through the most because it got the biggest at five eighths of an inch. Now it's time for a Halloween treat. Hi boys and girls, for our fun Halloween treat, we're actually going to be making a charcuterie board. Charcuterie boards are all the rave right now. A lot of people are making them. So let's make one together that's centered around Halloween. So we have a few different things here and Una is going to tell you about them. Here's our first treat. Una, what is this? crackers orange crackers and then we have our next treat what is this Unai? goldfish goldfish and then we have marshmallows, marshmallows. and what's this black cookies her oreos what we are going to do is we are going to assemble our charcuterie board in this cake pan and we're actually going to be making something that looks like a pumpkin to make your halloween charcuterie board just lay down your orange crackers your halloween smile as your marshmallows and your eyes are your cookies awesome all right we made our charcuterie board what do you think Gunai? pumpkin pumpkin 
So if you see here, you kind of have to use a little bit of your imagination. We have our orange crackers. We have our black cookies as our eyes. We even have a green gummy bear for our stem. And we have the marshmallows for our teeth, our smile. So the next time you want to make a charcuterie board, just go and get some snacks and put it together and have different snacks together and say it's a charcuterie board. Can you say charcuterie board? Say it again. Charcuterie. Charcuterie. Good job. Here was our clue at the beginning of the video. Here's another example of a Halloween charcuterie board. Just lay down your orange crackers and use your black cookies and some chocolate sticks. Yum. For the next Halloween activity, we're going to actually be making my daughter into a mouse. mouse. So I have a black eyeliner here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a little black dot on her nose, like a mousey. Do you know what sound the mouse makes? Squeak, squeak, squeak. So that's her nose, just a little dot, and then you're just going to make whiskers. And then all you need to do is finish it off with some mouse ears that you have lying around. <laughs> so I hope you try it out too and make a fun Halloween costume, easy costume with whatever you have lying around your house. Hi boys and girls, thank you so much for being with me here today at PPES University. I hope you had a fun time learning about osmosis and working with some fun candy that we get during the holiday of Halloween, if you didn't figure it out already. And we had some fun making our pumpkin charcuterie board and you got to meet my daughter Unai and we turned her into a mouse. Dankeschön, which is also thank you in German, and have a great day, and be safe, boys and girls. Enjoy your Halloween season, and don't forget, practice makes progress, and Mrs. Castro is always rooting for you. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye! Daddy Do, to morning again, yeah. Hi, Miss Bora. Hey, Mr. Watley. Hey, PBS friends. It's Mr. Watley. Hi. So, what you doing? Well, we are looking at this map of Guam, and we're trying to name as many villages as we can. Oh, that's very cool. Which ones have you already named? Well, over here is Daddy Do, to morning again, yeah. Which, um, you know, we're kind of starting to run out of them. Um, do you know which villages we have here? Oh, yes, I would love to help you guys figure out some of these Thanks. villages. Um, let's start here in the north. Okay. So you see this one that's kind of shaped like an M? That one is Manilao. Manilao, M, wow, I never noticed that before, how cool. All right, and also you see this one that looks like a baseball field? It kind of does. Mm -hmm. Baseball field starts with the letter B, right? Yeah. And there's only one village on Guam that starts with the letter B. Barragada. Barragada. B. Baseball Barragata. field. That's awesome. That's so helpful. Hey, did you know that I know the word for village in Chamorro? Really? Yes, I do. The word in Chamorro is Sang Song. Sang Song. Sang Song. Very good, Mr. Watley. Let's all try it together. Are you ready? Yes, I'm very Okay. Ready. Village Sang Song. Village Sing Song! Yeah! Yay! Great job, everybody! So I'm actually heading to the 6th and 8th grade social studies class. Would you and the PBS friends like to come and join me? Let's go! Well, before we leave though, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that little bell notification to keep up with PBS University. Alright, off to class! Let's go! Let's go! Scared you, didn't I? Oh, oh, it looks like I really did. Oh, that was more effective than I expected. Oh, okay, calm down, kids, calm down. It, it's just me, it's just me. Tony Watt the second, back with another spooktacular lesson here at PBS University. It being the Halloween season and all, I thought I embraced the spirit of the holiday by giving you guys a bit of a jump scare. Turned out to work a bit too well. <laughs> Speaking of which, 
What entities say boo? Well, that's right, our dear friend right here. Ghosts! And tell me, kids, do any of you know what the Palauan word for ghost is? You don't? Well, then let me tell you. It's delib. Here, let's practice it together now. Delib. 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 Very good, kids. And since I gave you quite a scare there, how about I how about I make up for it by giving you guys a bit of levity, give you guys a quick joke. So here's the joke. You ready? <clears throat> Where do ghosts go to buy clothes? You don't know the punchline to the joke? Well, stay till the very end to find out what it is. Now, for today's lesson, kids, I'm going to do a brief history on the origin of the word boo and why ghosts say it. And once I'm done with that, we're going to do a little bit of a fun activity creating our very own ghosts. Are you ready, kids? Well, then let's get started. So, kids, where does the word boo come from? Well, the thing is, is that most historians don't necessarily agree to the origin of the word itself. However, many of them do compare the word boo to the Latin word buare and the Greek word buain, which both mean to cry aloud, roar, or shout. So basically, when a ghost is saying boo, Historically speaking, they're actually saying, Ooh, I'm yelling at you! Get out of here, you crazy kids! Ooh! One of the earliest written records of the word boo, as reported by Forrest Whitman, comes from 1738 in Scotch Presbyterian Eloquence Displayed, where the author, Gilbert Croquet, has it that boo is a word used in the north of Scotland to frighten crying children. The word seemed to arrive to its startling power in the 1820s when boo became a word that was used to startle people during the witchiest parts of the year, preferably wearing a sheet over one's head. Well, wasn't that fascinating, kids? We learned about the origin of the word boo where it came from, how it was used, and how it has evolved over time. But enough of the lesson, kids. Now it's time to get to the fun stuff. We're going to do an activity where we're going to create our very own ghost. Are you ready? Then let's get started. All right, kids, the time has come. Are you ready to create your very own ghost? You are? Well, then what are we waiting for? Let's go. In order to do this activity properly, you really only need four things. The first thing is a small little ball. It can be a golf ball, a ping pong ball, or a practice ball. Anything that can fit between your thumb and your pointer finger. Once you have your ball, the next thing that you're going to need is a few gauze pads. The gauze pads will be used to create the ghostly shape of our ghosts. Also give it the white complexion and all that stuff. Now, how are we going to keep the gauze pad stuck onto the small little ball. Well, we're gonna have to use some glue for that one. I highly recommend that you use either Gorilla Glue, Super Glue, or a very strong adhesive to keep the gauze pad down. And the last material that you need is a black marker. We have to draw the face somehow, so I highly recommend that you get a black marker, a dark marker, or something that can help you create the overall look the facial feature of said ghost. All right, kids, we now have all of our material laid out right in front of us. So now comes the real fun part, the creation of our ghosts. Now, the steps to creating the ghosts are very simple. The first thing you're gonna do is take that really small ball and add some adhesive on the top of the ball. Once you place the adhesive on top of the ball, you're then going to take a gauze pad and firmly place it right where you put the adhesive and press firmly down so that the gauze pad is now stuck to the ball. Give it a bit of a ghostly shape. Now, sometimes the gauze pad might be a bit too long 
for our ghostly figure. Some of mine were a bit too long, so I actually had to trim the edges, trim the bottom, which actually helped to give a bit of a wavy look, which helped to make it look more ghost-like. And once you place the gauze pad firmly on the small little ball using the adhesive, you now can begin to create the face of your ghost with our black or dark marker. So start adding in some eyes, add a bit of a mouth, add any sort of cool design or spooky design that can add to your ghost. I did a few myself, some of them didn't turn out as well as others, but some of them have some really distinctive look, really creepy vibes. And that, kids, is how we create our little ghosts. How did yours turn out? So kids, we've done a lot for this lesson, haven't we? We learned about the origin of the word boo and how it evolved over time. And you guys got to do a really fun arts and crafts activity, making your very own ghost. And I hope that your ghosts all turned out really amazing and really spooky. But before we end today, I believe I owe you the punchline to that joke I told you earlier. And that joke was, where do ghosts buy their clothes? At a boutique. <laughs> Get it? Boutique. It's a boutique. Oh, <laughs> oh, dad joke. And with that wonderfully hilarious joke, kids, we will conclude today's lesson here at PBS University. And always remember, kids, if it happened, it's history. So till our next historical moment comes, kids, I'm your fifth through eighth grade social studies teacher, Tony Water II, and I will see you at our next lesson. Take care, kids. Happy Halloween. Do you know who said what goes up must come down? If you said Sir Isaac Newton, you're right. He discovered the laws of gravity and motion and he invented calculus. And that's your fast fun fact. Welcome, I'm Agent Castro again. Today we are going to go on an investigation in the Thrive in Five Corner. That is, if you are up for the challenge, you will be tasked to solve the mystery of the missing manners. Why are manners important? Because it helps to develop a society. It creates respect, loyalty, and gratitude. Good manners can be shown by a person on a social level and an international level, which we will get to do on this mission. And what is etiquette? Well, they are rules of proper behavior. And in different countries, the rules differ. So it's important that when we travel or when we meet people from different backgrounds, we prepare in advance and are aware of their customs and practices. Are you ready to go on this mission? We have invited a world traveler who just happens to be my cousin, Lin Bling Castro, who will help us on good manners and etiquette. Thank you, darling. Well, hello. I just came from Greece and this is the proper way to wave. So I'm here to help you explore the appropriate behavior in their different cultures so that we can better interact with people and we can rule the world. Oh no, oh, oh travel the world, so we can travel the world. Oh, what's this? Oh, I just got a text message and it says that I'm invited to a party. We better get started learning manners and etiquette. But it's actually a secret mission to find the missing manners. I don't mind at all. Let's get to the mission now, shall we? The first country we're going to explore is Japan. The greetings there are accompanied with a bow. It's their primary way of showing respect to other people. A proper response after the bow is to say Hajimimashite, which means nice to meet you, or you could say Yoroshiku Negaishimasu, which means I'm looking forward to getting to know you. And as for table manners, Japan is known to make excellent ramen noodles. So you have to slurp the noodles to show that you appreciate. 
Slurping means it's delicious. Be mindful that it may be rude in other countries. Lastly, sayonara means goodbye. Sayonara. The next country we're exploring is Italy. So a greeting there is ciao, which means hello. And usually you would say that to the younger ones. For the older ones, out of respect, they usually say buongiorno. Buongiorno. A phrase to remember there is mangia bene, ridi spesso, ama molto, which means eat well, laugh often, love much. Now moving on to table manners, the do's and don'ts. Do not cut your spaghetti with a fork or knife there. Mamma mia! It is Italy, the pasta capital of the world. So they will be watching you there. The proper way to eat it is to twirl it. You can use your plate or a spoon to scoop it up. The whole thing is to make sure that you get the essence of the spaghetti. Now to say goodbye, you say Arrivederci. Arrivederci. The next place we are visiting is the largest country in South America, Brazil. The official language there is Portuguese. So when you say hello, you say hola or bom dia. Now here is another don't. This in Brazil is an offensive gesture, but this is okay. This in Brazil, not okay. This, okay. For table manners, people dine quietly and eat everything with utensils, particularly a fork and knife, even with their fruit. If there's finger food, they will grab it with a napkin. Churrasco is a type of Brazilian barbecue and skewers, Fork on the left, knife on the right, and cut. We must thank them for a delicious meal. Obrigado! Which means thank you when males will say obrigado. An interesting thing about saying goodbye in Brazil is that it's the same way as saying hello in Italy. Do you remember? Ciao! Yes! But in Brazil, it's spelled this way. Now that we are done, I am off to the party. What a lovely gentleman opening the door for me. Well, oh, it's quite dark in here. The doors are locked and the lights won't turn on. I think I'm stuck in here. What to do? Oh, there's a text message from Agent Castro. Mr. and Mrs. Manners, the owners of the mansion, want to make sure we know the appropriate etiquettes before we can meet people from all over the world. And if we don't, we will end up in this room, stuck. All right, here are the questions. I hope you guys can help me with it so I can get out of this room. So in the greetings, how do you greet a person in these countries? Thank you, thank you. All right, now next question, phrases. How do you say nice to meet you in Japanese? It's Hajime Mashite. Correct, correct. Now for table manners. How do you eat spaghetti properly? You slurp it. Agent Castro, are you trying to keep me trapped in here? Oh no, you twirl it. Next question. How do you eat fruit in Brazil? Why do you have a knife? That's the answer, a knife to cut it. Do you think I can unlock the door with this? Okay, next question. How about eating ramen noodles in Japan? You slurp it. By the way, that is my Scottish accent. <laughs> I went to Scotland earlier this year. Okay, next question. It's time to say goodbye. Sayonara in Japan, arrivederci in Italy, and ciao in Brazil. Mission accomplished. Needless to say, Ling Bling was the life of the party with all her good manners. And people can enjoy your company too when they see that you took the time to learn their customs and greetings by practicing good etiquette. So it is never too early to be a young gentleman and a young sophisticated lady. 
it will help you to go far in life. I'm Agent Castro signing out. And this is Ling Bling Castro. And I'm going to be the one to tell you to vibe, to jive, and then strive, which means to have goals. And be a world traveler like me. So you can rule the world. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Bye. Happy day, everyone. This is Mr. Ernesto Choco and Nikki. With your fast, fun fact. Uh, Nikki, let's go ahead and breathe. It's all about rainforest today. Wow, pure oxygen. Breathe again. Ah. Speaking of rainforest, uh -huh. did you know that the largest and most famous rainforest is the Amazon rainforest in Brazil? Oh, I didn't know that. Wow, and how big is it? Actually, the Amazon rainforest is about as big as the contiguous United States. <gasps> That's huge! I know, right? And even better, it contains 10% of all the world's biomass. Wow. Meaning that if the trees were cut down, we would lose the production of oxygen, something that we need to breathe. That's right, and if that happens, then it's really bad for me and for you and for the entire human race. Yeah. And PBS University people. But don't forget, even worse, if all the trees would be cut down, all the animals and the birds, they would lose their precious home. Oh no, so is there something that we can do about it? Actually, there is. If we remember our three R's, three R's. Reduce, reduce, reuse, reuse, and recycle. Recycle. Well, that's your fast fun fact. Let's do it again. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Bye, everyone. Hop a day, PBS University friends, and Toriku a Torito. Welcome to Tomorrow Time with me, Senora Max. <laughs> Toriko a Torito means trick or treat in Japanese. Can you say trick or treat in Japanese, Famagun? Toriko a Torito. Malik Famagun. How do you say trick or treat in your language, Famagun? Awesome job! So exciting! Anyway, guys, before we begin our lesson, I wanted to share a story with you that my nana, my mother, and my tata, my father, had shared with me. Are you ready for this? Let's make sure you guys are listening, okay? Echo look, Malik. So here's our story. Nana says, come on, come and sit down. It's like, oh, oh my goodness, this is going to be scary. So she and my father were going for a drive at Cross Island. Cross Island Road is a road that connects from one village that connects us to the other. So here goes, Famagun. Pay attention. Now listen, Hamzu. So they go driving and driving, and they notice that they see this man standing at the side of the road, and they stop. And they asked the man, because he was walking in the direction that they were driving to, and asked out of their kindness of their hearts, Hi sir, do you need a ride? It looks like we're going in the same direction. But of course my parents knew that this man had a bag with him. And in that bag, nobody knew. Do you know? Nope, nobody knew guys, not them. So they were just trying to be safe. So when they asked the man, hey, before you ride with us, can you show us what's in the bag? But the man did not want to show them. He just said, no, I'll just go my, my merry way and just leave me alone. So my parents said, okay. Then they go driving and driving and driving and boom, they stop because they see a woman, right? And so, they stop and they see the woman. Hey, ma'am, do you need a ride? It looks like you're headed in the same direction as we are. And the woman, the lady, right? She was just like, sure, wow, how nice of you. But my parents, my nana and tata, they knew that she also had a bag. Well, 
in their mind, they're like, well, maybe we should ask her what's in the bag. We just want to be safe. And then when my mom had asked, when my Nana had asked the women, I'm so sorry, ma'am, but what do you have in the bag? And the woman turned around and she said, that's for me to know and for you to find out. It's okay, I'll just walk my merry way. So my parents left and they drove and drove and drove and up ahead, they see a little girl, a young girl. I think she was like 12 years old, like sixth grade if I'm not mistaken. And they stop. Same thing, Femagun. They stop and they're like, well, hi, are you okay? And the girl says, yes, yes, ma'am, I am. And they asked her the same thing. You look like you're going in the same direction as we are. Do you need a ride? Yes. But then she had a bag as well. This time the bag was more, it was big. And so my parents said, okay, jump into the back seat. So the girl comes, the 12 year old girl, the, I think the sixth grader jumps in the back seat of the car and they go driving and driving and driving. What's that, Famagun? Did I hear you say something? What's in the bag? <laughs> anyway, in order for you to find out what's in the bag, you need to stick around in this lesson because we have something good coming up. Today, Famagun, we're going to learn some Chamorro words that has to do with... <laughs> That's right! Halloween, right? Halloween in Chamorro, we say Ha'anan Buregu. Can you say Ha'anan Buregu? Malik Famagun. Look at this picture, Famagun. What? That's right, it's a pumpkin. Pumpkin in Chamorro means Kalamasa. Kalamasa. Can you say Kalamasa, Famagun? Awesome job, Famagun. Our next word, Famagun, is she flies on a broom, sometimes over the moon. Who do you think she, I'm talking about, or she may be? That's right, Famagun, a witch. A witch in Chamorro is Bruja, Bruja. Can you say witch in Chamorro, Famagun? Malik Famagun. Now it's time to review our words of the day. Are you ready? We learned Toriku a Toritu. Do you know and remember what that means? Malik Famagun, which by the way, I'm going to share the answer to our question in the beginning. And that, my friends, is a Toriku, a trick for you. Malik, our words also that we had learned was Halloween means Ha'anin Buregu. Ha'anin Buregu. Malik Famagun. Our next word was Kalamasa. Kalamasa. What was Kalamasa? Yeah, that's right, a pump. The last one, she rides on her broom and over the moon. Yes, our witch and witch in Chamorro means Malik Famagun, yes, Bruja. Now, Autoriku, our trick to our question, what was in the bag, was, what do you think? She had a bag full of candies. <laughs> Isn't that just so hilarious? Sitsus Masi for joining me in Chamorro time, Chamorro time, until next time. Adios! Remember, Hasu, met good, how you are strong.
I'm Josh Tenorio, your Lieutenant Governor. Thank you for being with us today and for taking the time to continue your learning with PBS University. I also want to thank your teachers and support staff at DOE and PBS Guam for their work and their commitment to you, our students. Si dus and we hope that you enjoy this PBS University instruction.